Yeah, welcome back people to another The Ends with your one and only Grizz And this week we want to look at Mourinho's miracle United's Europa League triumph I won Europa League final with long balls from Sergio Romero to Maroon Fellaini Ajax pressing but pressing oxygen because the ball was not there Ball to Fellaini's chest Play from there 2-0 Bring the cup home, three titles, disaster of a season. Another classic line from Jose Mourinho. And that encapsulates the charisma, the man, the myth, the legend. And what he brought to Manchester United in that first season, 2016-2017. When United won the Europa League, qualified for Champions League the next year. And ended up sixth in the Premier League. So, United at this point would have gone some years without seeing much success. Ironically, they sacked Van Hal two days after winning the FA Cup and appointed Jose as the new heir to take over this club that was seemingly in turmoil. And you know Jose, especially at this point in his career, he would have just won the Premier League a season or so before with Chelsea, but then got sacked. So at this point, he would still seem to carry that magic that fans would still believe in at this point, despite not liking his style of play in many respects. You know, the classic part the bus, double part the bus. People wasn't really a fan of that, especially United fans, which can be the most fickle and most critical fans in the world. And so, what was the expectations at this point? Um, I don't, I don't really remember much from 2016, but from what I could garner, um, the biggest thing would have been to return back to Champions League, even bigger than trying to place first in the league. I think getting back to Champions League would have been a top priority because Champions League come with money. You get a different amount of bread, you know, and believe it or not, Manu was heavily about the business. With the new ownership now, fans are hoping there will be a lot more football-based decisions, but up to this point, United was heavy, heavy, heavy on business, marketing, you know, trying to exploit as much profit and value you can from every foreseeable investment that was made at the club you know and so a lot of footballing decisions got sacrificed for monetary ones so at this point yeah definitely would have been champions league um the team strength i don't know that that could be subjective um they would have had a young marshall at the time who there was still a lot of promise around him you had a young rashford that there was a lot of promise around um, they still had some of the senior players like Valencia, Juan Mata, Rooney. Um, they brought in Pogba and Henry Mkhitaryan. There's a lot of potential around those guys and how they would gel. We had Zlatan coming in, who was supposed to be a key figure, you know, critical piece to pulling everyone together. So... I don't know. I'm not going to say this was really a strong team in all respects, but it was a team that qualification to Champions League should have been possible. Granted how the season went with injuries and so forth, that didn't really work out. But knowing Mourinho, I don't want to say he's a cup or a competition, a cup competition type of coach, but he definitely, definitely has... The, the eye for strategizing how he's going to take on cup competitions round after round after round and I would have believed that he would have looked seriously at the squad what he wants from the squad and look at the Europe, the Europa Cup and think this is definitely a competition that we must win even if it wasn't required of him by the organization, I believe they would have looked at that cup and said, we have to win this cup. This this is 
going to be a necessity. But as always, he's measured, so he would have taken it round by round and see how far this team would have been able to progress. Now, Jose's record at this point is undeniable. You know, he's one with Porto. He's one with um, Inter Milan at Champions League level. So, in many people's eyes, Europa League is seen in lesser regard than Champions League. And what I can recall during that time is the fan base wasn't particularly thrilled. Because imagine, you know, we're coming from playing in Champions League regularly under Sir Alex, where this is where you're used to. And, you know, anytime you get used to something, everything else doesn't compare you know what you get used to becomes a standard and so um I, uh, don't quote me but i'm almost certain at the end of that season with how things went with that europa league some some of the the pundits let's call them that at the time would have found it a bit disgraceful how you know, celebrations were being carried on over the Europa League because, you know, Manchester United is, for want of a better expression, bigger than the Europa League. But nevertheless, Jose's record would have no doubt given a lot of confidence to the team in that he knows what he's doing. There was there was something interesting I noticed when looking back at um some of the highlights from that European run. So early in the group stages, you would have noticed Rooney had a more prominent feature in the squad at that time. Rooney, Zlatan, one matter. Their presence would have to me at least, and granted this is just a highlight, but just was just noticing the players that would have you know, you kept seeing in key moments of the game, these three guys would have been like your pillars, your fundamental pillars of the team. Your one matter, your Rooney in midfield, your Zlatan up front. You had Antonio Valencia in the defensive area of the park. You had Carrick as well in the midfield. So these senior players to me were some of the fundamental pieces that the team had. And... Though our progression through the group stages wasn't necessarily boding well for confidence, we did eventually make it through um, in second place. You know, we I think the, the game that we won to secure our spot, we did so with emphatic fashion, I mean. From what I could see, because I didn't get to see a lot of those games back then, but from what I could see in the highlights, the, the, the way how the team played was, it's almost like quintessential Jose, like early, the Chelsea days, you know. The creativity, the link-up, the movement, the, the dynamism in the team, even with Pogba making his, you know, they, they like to label him a luxury player. Well, he had his luxury passes that would come in from time to time, almost like when he was at Juventus. And and though the team wasn't perfect by any means, you could see that with time, with these players together, that there was potential for the squad to do things, you know, with some introduction of fresher legs, younger legs. But having these senior players around as the nucleus to keep the team together, you could see things happening and I think that's what the Europa League, for me at least, kind of showed. So as I said, it wasn't necessarily a smooth sailing through the group stages, but they made it through. And I would credit a lot of that to the, the leadership of the players on the field as well as the coach. You know, the seniors helped shoulder the responsibility from the young pug by the young Rashford, the young um, Lingard. But those guys also featured throughout that competition as well, you know. We'll make it through the group stages, you know. And let's fast forward a bit to the 
the quarterfinals now because what I wanted to see was I wanted to match the injuries that the team was suffering and how that impacted team selection because one thing you'll notice you know like early in the early part of the fixtures that September to December the group stages you saw a lot of Rooney, you saw a lot of one matter. Not much Mikitarian. Or his impact at least was not significant. He even saw some De Gea in goal um, at first. But once we hit that group stage, like even in this match, this quarter final match with Anderlik, like this was Mikitarian's game. Like his stamp on that game was significant. You couldn't miss it. And you you would continue to notice him featuring in the game as things progressed. Um, he scored in the 10th minute. I think that game went... That game went into extra time. Um, it, 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 was, it was truly a, a, a thrilling encounter from, from what I could tell. And... Yeah, that that was just one of the things that I noticed that the 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 players that would have been selected that would have played on the team, there you started to see that shape. So like in this game, this game would have had Abramovich, Rashford, Mkhitaryan, Lingard, Carrick, Pogba, Valencia, Sh- Luke Shaw. Look at that, Eric Bailly, Rojo, Romero. Those are the players that made up this team. So what we're seeing here, no Rooney, no one matter. So it's a fairly young midfield. You have your Carrick in there as your, your senior guy. And Ibramovic as your, your other senior guy. And, you know, I think the team played fairly well. We, we had Rooney on the bench, Marshall, Daly Blin, Herrera, Fellaini. And in that game... We would have dominated the possession. We had a better pass accuracy. We we played pretty well in that game, I think. Rashford also scored in that game. So that was a... I think that was a a key game for us as well. That helped us to progress. Where we played Celta Celta Vigo, I think. I think Vigo is the last name. Where we played Celta Vigo in the semi-finals. And that was another... That was another tense game because we won the first match one love. Right. We won the first match one love. It was there's one there's one feature of Mourinho teams and that's their defensive stature. So if you notice a, a Mourinho side not you know holding it down well defensively, you know something is wrong. And I think in this one, this was when Rashford scored that free kick. It was a, it was a crazy free kick. Let me let me double check that. But I do, I do believe this was the one where he scored that free kick. Yep. Yo, the way how he hit that ball, and and not only not only how he hit it, he used the inside of his foot. He struck that ball so hard and with so much turn on it. The ball is literally moving away from the goal. And it's like it just catches that outside post at the right time. There's no way the keeper is saving that. There's no way. Right. And if you look at this team. So I'm going to think that by this semi-final match. We no longer had Zlatan. Because look at this lineup now. He's playing Lingard. Up top, Mikitarian and Rashford out on the flanks. And you have Fellaini and Herrera on each side of Pogba with Pogba in the middle. But this is a 4 3 3, a variation of a 4 3 3. But based on the setup, it looks like he's playing Darmian and Valencia further up the pitch. And Blind and, and Eric Bailly. You know, so it, it, it has this, you know, you and you kind of look to it. But it's really a 4-3-3. Again, we have Rooney, Smalling, 
he has Carrick on the bench. So you, you can see tactically he's making some some changes for this game. Bringing in Herrera and Fellaini to me speaks to him going into this game to be more physical. Otherwise, he would have gone with Carrick. Cause your quality of passes would be better with Carrick in the team. But by going for Fellaini and Herrera, he's going for that physicality. What intrigues me is that I don't know if he did it in the Premier League, but he did not deploy Rooney as a striker. He went with Lingard. And that I don't know if that was because he wanted the defensive work rate even up to that maybe Rooney at that phase of his career wasn't able to give. But leaving Mata Rooney and Carrick on the bench to me, physicality from those guys with the exception of maybe Rooney, you probably wouldn't get. And this midfield is very robust. Nobody's pushing down Fellaini or Herrera and Pogba himself is pretty physical. And they have the pace on the right with Rashford. You have some pace with Lingard. So you, you, you see now he's looking at this like a boxing match, you know. He's trying to slug it up, but he's keeping the pace. So when there is an opening, he can strike. And when it came to the second leg, that one was 1-1. One, one, but we were leading one low for most of the game, you know. And it was towards the end, like just before time was up that's when we conceded and then we almost conceded again in extra time uh more in time added on it was it was it was a crazy it was a crazy end to the game i will tell you that it was a crazy end and and again for this game he goes for the same setup same 4-3-3 you know valencia and darmian on the flanks but this time not as high. And this time now, instead of playing with a flat three, he puts Herrera in front of Blind and Bailly to give the cover. And then have Pogba and Fellaini um, beside each other. But this time moves Rashford in the striker position and put Lingard and Mkhitaryan out on the flank. So... Like I said, when you look at that midfield, already you know that he's going in this to, well, as let's just call it what it is. He's going in this game to part the bus. Or maybe not completely part the bus, but he's going in cautious because, as you can see from the position, we gave up most of the position of the game. It was 39 for us, 61 for them. Um, passing accuracy as expected is lower than theirs. It was at 81. The amount of passes attempted just 281 compared to 593. So we didn't we didn't go into that game, or at least the end results of that game would suggest that we didn't look to go into that game to dominate it from an attacking front. But notwithstanding that, we had 10 shots. We had 10 attempts compared to their 17. But attempts on target, we had 4 to their 6. So, efficiency-wise, we were there, which is another feature of Marina teams when they are on form. You get what I'm saying? So, you, you could see that as he gets closer to the goal, that the team start to become more pragmatic. Um, you're not really throwing caution to the wind so much anymore because the aim is to make it to the finals, you know. So now you're being more chess-like in your plays, probably more defensive, and that's a feature of Mourinho. Now life has a way of coming full circle, and we we'll make it to the final to play against Ajax, and many of you would have probably seen, you know. Cruyff's comments about Mourinho and as a matter of fact let me try and see if I can pull up that real quick so 
So this is a ESPN article, right? It says Johan Cruyff says Jose Mourinho sets bad example, and he's critical of Louis Van Gaal. It's ironic because Louis Van Gaal coached the same Barcelona that he would have imparted this knowledge on, and he was also the coach when Jose was there. So. There is a lot of connection going on here and I'm wondering if maybe there is some bad blood that is stemming from way back in the 90s, right? So, Cruyff is quoted as saying, he's controversial. What I like about him is he's always capable of creating good ambience within the players and what I don't like is that he always puts himself on the first row. He should be on the second row. It's probably because of his background where he's never been cheered by a hundred thousand people or whistled at by a hundred thousand people. Maybe it's because of that. Maybe it's because of the interest from the press but I don't think he's educating children to play football or educating for life. He should behave better because he will be in the press all over the world. He doesn't dominate. I like dominating football. Manchester United doesn't play like that. Hold on. I feel like all of those comments were really... I'm not... I'm not... Yes. Well, yeah. So, no. So, those comments were really for Marina initially. So, he's criticizing him saying that you know even though he seems to have good rapport with the players he probably like the limelight too much and cry believes that he's probably like that because in his early careers and that's probably a dig at him not being a good player he wouldn't have been exposed to that limelight like that so this is probably his moment to try and get some limelight yeah, so Cruyff, Cruyff had this to say as well. The problem with Mourinho is that he only cares about results. The result is more important than his players. He always thinks short term, and that's simply not my thing, Cruyff insisted. Anyways, the, the point of me, you know, trying to... That, that really wasn't a specific comment I was looking for. But... The point is, Cruyff, Cruyff has always had something not flattering to say about Maureen. And you can imagine Maureen has not shied away from responding to Cruyff. Um, to paraphrase it, he's been, he's been well quoted as, as saying that, you know, He's learned a lot of things from Cruyff or he has a lot of respect for Cruyff but he's still yet to learn how to lose 4-0 in a Champions League final. And so, with that being said, we have Jose going up against Ajax and Ajax would have been... Um, how could I put this? Ajax would have been like embodiment of Cruyff in a sense um, we know that Cruyff would have been very impactful at Barcelona but Ajax would have been like the, 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 the home the birthplace in a sense so you have in essence what's happening here this is like the home of quote unquote home of what is considered beautiful football versus the proponent of anti football as he's often labelled and <laughs> to, to to no surprise to no surprise anti football one. I mean the proponents of total football loves to look to possession stats but it, I always find possession stats misleading if a team goes into a game to concede possession. It doesn't really speak much about your quality. It doesn't matter if I'm a big side or not. If I go into a football game and I go in with the game plan that I'm going to concede possession to you, 
Having 642 passes and completing 565 means nothing because my game plan was to let you have the ball. I was willing to sacrifice letting you have the ball and playing without the ball because I believed I would have been more focused and more diligent in thwarting your actual attempts at goal in spite of all this ball time that you would have. And what you see here, out of 17 shots, 17 attempts, only 3 attempts were on target from Ajax. You heard that? 17 attempts, only 3 on target. And for Man U, 6 attempts, 4 were on target. Again, we're seeing this kind of ruthless efficiency from Manchester United under Jose in that early, early season. <coughs> Defensively, United recovered the ball 64 times. They had 13 tackles, 9 blocks, 23 completed clearances. Ajax only had 12. Ajax only had 1 block. Right? So, you had this young Ajax team going up against a mixed bag for Manchester United, but a coach who understood what is required to win a finals and this is where many may differ and <clears throat> those who want that nice sparkling finals may not get but at the end of the day you go in a competition to win and Jose more than anybody else understands the minds of those who play total football it doesn't mean that every time he goes up against one of the schoolhouses that plays like that he's gonna win but given the day, given the right players, he understands exactly how to demolish or how to break down, how to wear down a team that plays like that. Remember when United beat Man City or was it Tot Tottenham? But Jose was the coach. Pep side had the game in terms of possession stats, the ball, the game was played in Jose's team half for, for most of the game. And yet still they won two love. Right? The precision, the ruthlessness, but the focus and the concentration defensively. You see, park people people oversimplify parking the bus because it's it's hard to process. It's hard to process. But let's put it in context. When Barcelona was playing against <coughs> PSG the other day in Champions League, they were down to 10 men. And they decided to do the proverbial thing, which was to put bodies behind the ball. That's how people like to describe parking the bus. You put bodies behind the ball and you flood the box with your players and you try to make it difficult for them to score. But you could see that Lewandowski was supposed to close down the space on that PSG player. I don't remember who it was. Maybe that was the goal that um that Dembele scored. And he had a lackadaisical approach to closing down the space or putting a foot towards the player to try and block the shot. And that shot resulted in a goal. The point I'm trying to make is defensive setup and playing rigid people in italy might more appreciate this it requires a lot of intelligence it requires a lot of communication it requires teamwork and it requires focus you can't play a game without the ball for so long a period and maintain your focus defensively to prevent a team that you've given conceded possession to to keep passing from left to right, forward to back, but not being able to penetrate that 18 yard box properly because you have closed down the spaces, you have disrupted their ability to find the right options and you've given them no options. And what happened as a result in this game? Pogba scored from a Fellaini assist Mkhitaryan scored two new signings both had an impact in the game were one two love bam 
and that circles back to Marina's comment at the beginning, which to me was a was tongue in cheek because it wasn't as simple as just passing long balls up to Fellaini. They didn't play like that for the entire competition. But once it got down to the wire, once it started to look ha huh, quarterfinals, ha huh, semifinals, first leg, second leg, then you started to see him battening down the hatches, him moving to a more robust midfield, a midfield that, you know, you're going out there to for want of a better road, throw hands, throw those punches. And it was a significant win for Manchester United. As much as people tried to belittle it, even people within the United circle tried to belittle that win, that Europa League trophy has been insignificant. It was a trophy that brought us back to the Champions League. It was a trophy that brought silverware to our cabinets that was significant outside of England. So not just a FA Cup. But in addition to the FA Cup, it would have been another trophy. So this would have been back to back. This would have been a consecutive season with a trophy in it, you know. And I know at that time it might not have looked like much, but looking back, that's that's significant. That's significant. Um, For Jose Mourinho, this meant another European trophy to his collection. And as we would have seen in the years to come, the new league, that the new competition that was created, he also won that with Roma. So now he has a trophy from each one of the European championships. And I think until United are out of these dark ages, everything that happened during that Mourinho period is going to mark a keystone in our history going forward. As you can see, Almost every remark that he made then about the players or about the conditions at the club has been looked at in retrospect as some type of a proverb for when the present reveals that which seems emblematic of what he was saying. But at that time he was crucified for many of those things or many of those comments. As he usually is at every club he goes to. And this is not to make the man seem as though he's more than what he is, but if you are of an analytical mind, it is going to be easy for you to analyze and see things and be able to speak to them objectively enough. And so for me, that was a period, that one year was a really significant period for United almost similar to Ten Hag's first season where even though the league play was bad there was still some hope and if many of you remember we did actually kick on pretty strong the next season after getting Lukaku and somewhere along the line before going into December things just took left and we were unable to really hit another gear and only managed to just hold on to second. I do believe if we were somehow able to find another gear that season, we would have challenged City even more. But instead, we were only able to hold on to second. And I don't think the team has ever really hit that heights again until when Ole got the team to go second in that COVID year. But as we all know, once we mention that season, there's always going to be asterisks over that season. So, yeah, just check out Grizz.ends on Instagram. I'm also on TikTok, Grizz underscore ends. I'm on, I'm on X or Twitter as we formerly used to call it, Grizz ends underscore. And I'm also on YouTube, Grizz underscore ends. This is going to be up on YouTube. So, Hit me up on these different platforms. You can reach out to me. We can chop it up. If you disagree, if you agree, if you think I'm chatting rubbish or something I say resonate with, trust me. Message me. I don't take none of this to heart. It's football. It's commentary. We all have different opinions. It's what we love to do. We love to talk about the game. I love this game. 
I love you all for supporting. Keep supporting me. Buy me a coffee, guys. You know, help me to continue to make content that you love and to improve the quality of the content that you're getting. I'm out. Yo, yo. You know it's your boy, Grizz. And we're out here on Grizz Ends. So make we kick it off like a ball, you know. One beer could have never two. Chilling with the crew. So make we kick it off. On the ends. Chilling with the friends. Shopping it up, no blame. What we say?